Hello, hello, my friends. So today's episode is going to be a very, very special episode. Um, when I say near and dear to my heart, I think that's an understatement. I uh, did a Facebook Live about a recent fight that I had with my wife, Fanny. And to say that it's gotten some of the best comments and feedback of anything I've ever uh, put together has, is, is an understatement. It was um, something that I thought would come out as a 10, 15 minute share about what not to do if you want your relationships to succeed. And in doing so, I think I poured my heart out for about 40 minutes. So what you're about to hear is a very personal and raw story. Um, I think it's very important to to share stuff like this just because I've been doing personal development work for 16 plus years does not alleviate me or um, you know, restrict me from having fights with my family, or in this case my wife, uh, having things that I have to deal with. Uh, hopefully in this share you will basically get to see there's five things that I came to, um, as I went through this process, that I believe if you took on and put into effect into your life, into your relationships, whether it's with your intimate lover or partners at work or even your kids, uh, you will have massive, massive improvement in your relationships. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to let this uh, audio here play of everything that I gathered and the process that I went through after probably one of the biggest fights I've ever had with my wife. If after hearing this, it resonates with you, please, please, please reach out to me, Elon at satoriprime.com, or you can find me at Facebook at Elon Ferdman and personal message me. I would love to hear what you took away from this. Hope you're having an amazing day. Enjoy. All right. So let me let me jump in here um, because I experienced something last week uh, that's still, you know, I've been processing. I was just been kind of figuring out how to how to share this, um, and uh, this might be a little bit longer of a of a Facebook Live, but I thought it was really really important. Uh, by the way, let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay, um, I thought this was really important to share because I think what I experienced is something that most couples would actually probably lead to divorce or, uh, <laughs> or I don't know, maybe even worse. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through the story and then I'll actually walk you through uh, what I learned from it and, and really how I'm really, really hoping that you hear this and implement this in your life. Uh, immediately so that you don't have to deal with uh, with what I just went through. So um, Yom Kippur happened, and for those that don't know, it was a Jewish holiday, one of the high holy days uh, last week. And um, it's, you know, I'm not religious. I don't uh, personally do well with organized religion, which I'll talk about a little bit later as to why. Um, hey, Nikki. Hey, Drew. Um, but really... You know, this is something that's really important to my wife, uh, Fanny, and I love my wife and I adore my wife and she wants to give our kids an experience of religion. And while I don't have that view, you know, I, for me, it's more about the traditions and the family and the get togethers. Um, I, I can see where she's coming from. I appreciate it. Um, and so while this has been a struggle, an ongoing struggle uh, in our relationship, there, there's very few things that we disagree with at that kind of level. Um, this is definitely one of them. And I, I'm clear, before I get into any of the other stuff, I'm clear that this is something that I get to work on. Obviously, I married my wife, which the irony of the whole thing is that her entire side of the family are Orthodox Jews. Her brother's a rabbi. So like, who does Elon pick to get married? But, uh, you know, lessons are everywhere, right? So we actually uh, are starting to plan to go to synagogue. And I really, and I, and I, and I want to say this, I, I really went in with the absolute best of intentions. Like I know I don't enjoy it there. And I still, I was like, look, it's an hour, hour and a half. I'm going to be there with the family. I could just do what I do. Right. And just, it, it'll be over really soon. Hey, what's up, Tori? Hey, Bevan. So 
I'm getting ready and I'm going to walk you through all of these pieces so you really start to get and then I'll kind of tie the thread of what I've been unraveling for myself throughout this entire process. So I'm getting ready to go to synagogue and it's hot outside and we're going to walk for a bit. So I was like, I don't want to wear a suit. And so I don't wear a suit. I just wear pants and a button down and a, and a tie. And my wife's like, why don't you wear a suit? Everyone's going to be wearing a suit. And I'm like, well, I don't want to wear a suit. So, you know, it already kind of starts like a little bit of attention. And she knows, she knows that I have resistance towards going. So I think in her world, there's also this story of like, oh, Elon's doing his Elon thing again and blah, blah, blah. But really, I, I, I was going in with the best of intentions. Right before we leave, and this, this becomes important in a little bit, right before we leave, uh, we had about like three minutes, four minutes before we leave. And the kids are like, can we get some screen time? And we said, no, we're leaving in three, four minutes. And when I walked downstairs after getting ready, my son is in the kitchen watching TV. And I'm like, Shia, we told you no screen time. Please turn off the TV. And he's like, Abba, what's the big deal? There's just three minutes. No. I'm like, Shia, we had this conversation and I told you and it's no big deal. It's no big deal. So at this point, I'm like, give me the controller. And he's trying to hold it for me, blah, blah, blah. So I reach in there. I grab it from him. And I turn it off. And he kind of storms off, obviously, like a little bit angry, which is is OK. And we were about to leave and no one can find Shia. Shia is nowhere to be found. So eventually my wife finds him like I'm already in the car getting ready to go. Uh, my wife finds him in the dining room with his head literally in the corner of the wall crying. I didn't realize it was like that, in, you know, impactful what, what he had experienced, but that's what he was doing. So she comes down, she's fuming. Like I did something, I ruined this, now he, whatever. And so I say, in all seriousness, kind of maybe to try to get out of the synagogue, but not really to get out of the synagogue. Uh, she's like, you need to fix this. I was like, well, do you want me to stay home and just have a conversation with him? And she flips because again, this is like Elon not wanting to go, her wanting to be with the whole family, etc. So, um, eventually as, as I go to walk upstairs to figure out what he wants to do, um, he ends up coming down the stairs. So we go, but he's not talking to me. He's super angry. He's not talking to my wife. He's not talking to me. We all get in the car. We start driving and he's walking now we're like getting out of the car we parked and we're walking to shul which is a little bit of a way and he's walking super slow which i have to tell you in all honesty part of me was like brother walk as slow as you want because the last place i want to be right now is inside that synagogue i was like you take your time little man <laughs> and i can see my wife like fuming as as this is happening um but i'm just walking to you through the everything that 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 was occurring for me so eventually we get inside. Uh, my wife's like, do you want to put a talus on, which is this, uh, I don't know, it's like a piece of fabric that, that some men wear in shul. And I'm like, no, I don't want to wear it on. So this was like check, no check mark number, you know, three, four in her. Elon doesn't want to be here. Elon's a fuck you to all of this, etc. So we go to sit in and Shai doesn't want to come in. So he's against the wall again head kind of against the wall outside the synagogue. I go in, I'm like, whatever, he's got to do his thing. He's got to relax. I'm going to be in here. And I sit in there and services are about to start and rabbi is saying a few things and having people introduce themselves to each other. Hey, Jordina. Hey, Miguel. Hey, Cynthia. Um, and I'm sitting there and, and I've been doing a lot. I don't, you know, for some of you guys follow me more than others. Um, I've been doing a lot of work energistically. So like understanding what is happening in my system, really getting in tune. Hey, what's up, Mark? Really getting in tune with, uh, with what I can feel in the body as sensations so that, and this is going to come into play a little bit later. Um, so that as I'm feeling it before, that's the first way that the, the, your system communicates is through the body, through different mechanisms, uh, through different tightenings or shrinking or pain or pokes or prods. That's the first clue that something's happening that then in essence turns into some sort of, uh, feeling or emotion. And you, you label that. And then that creates the thought. And then that thought actually creates the action. So if you can capture things while this is happening, and this is something we work with our clients quite a lot, and I'm working on myself quite a lot. Um, you can get to things much quicker. And, and I'm going to point to that here uh, a little bit later because I actually did a, a lot of work around this. So I'm sitting there and this whole thing starts. 
and I can start to feel and, and tune in and let me know if this has been your experience ever where you, I could start to feel this thing like in the pit of my stomach and it just starts rising and rising and rising. It's almost like a volcano is in my system and I could feel it just building and building and building. And I'm like, it, it gets to the, this, by the, by the way, this is all happening in five minutes of me being in synagogue. Okay. So it started with like, Hey, turn to this person, say hi, turn to that person, tell them this, tell them that, tell someone what, you know, something that, uh, th that you worked on, you're proud of this year, like simple stuff. Right. And I'm just feeling all this stuff, build and build and build. And then it's like, you know, we we're reading from this page and I'm like, fuck that. I, I'm not picking up that, that book. I'm not reading from that. So I put it down and then it's like, okay, stand up and turn this way and bend and, and then sit down and then, you know, uh, this side's going to sing this and this side's going to sing that. And I am just starting to feel everything just rise and rise and rise and rise to the point that at some point my daughter's sitting on me and we're all supposed to stand like all the adults, everyone's supposed to stand. And my wife looks at me. She's like, are you going to stand? And I'm like, I can't. Aaliyah's sitting on me, which in hindsight, you know, you realize like, eh, that's not really an excuse, Elon. Um, but at the time I was like, and, and, and all this stuff is just building and building and building to the point where the only way I can describe this to you, it was like rage, absolute rage. And I don't know how many of you guys seen that Dave Chappelle show, but it's like, Elon's got to choke a bitch. Like that's where it, it was like, so I was like, Aah! you know, and I was like, I have to get out of this room because I'm going to choke somebody. Now, meanwhile, nothing serious is happening. And, I, and this is really important to, to, for you to hopefully understand. It's like there's just sensations in the body. But the reality, like the stuff that's happening in the room is not that crazy. But in my system, the system's going fucking haywire. So I was like, I got to get out of this room. I got to get out of this room. So I get out of the room. And just as I get out of the room, um, my son is actually, this was his pre-K. So the two teachers that, that used to teach him were there in the hallway trying to figure out what's wrong with Shia. So I walk over, I start having a conversation with them. Shia's still not talking to me. And in that moment, as I'm talking to the teachers, he kind of like jumps on my back, but like in a loving, you know, cute way. And um, I turn around and I'm like looking at him. He's like, and he's just this cute, you know, like he was like two. Meanwhile, he's seven. He looks at me and goes, up. You know, like what they do when they're like really, really tiny. And so I pick him up and he gives me this huge hug. And I'm like, are you okay? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what, what happened? He's like, I'm not sure. I don't know why I reacted that way. And I was like, do you want to go outside and talk? He's like, yeah. So we go outside and talk. And meanwhile, it's like a gorgeous day. So we have this amazing conversation, which I'm not going to get into all the details. But we like really flush out what was happening, etc. And I'm sitting outside with my son, having this super loving, amazing moment. It's sunny, it's beautiful, and I'm checking in with my system, and my system is so relaxed and so at ease, and it's just like, ah, oh, you know, like that's the release, that's the feeling I was looking for. And then when I'm like thinking, I'm like, do I want to go back into that that room? Everything inside of me is like, fuck no. I do not want to experience what I just experienced, all that rage and all that boiling and all that stuff happened. I don't want to do that again. So I was like, I'd rather stay out here. So we end up staying outside for about an hour and my wife and daughter eventually come out and as she comes out and sees me, because she didn't know where we were, but as she comes out to see me, have you ever had someone look at you where it looks like fire laser beams? are coming out of their eyes, like they are going to murder you, but they haven't said a word. It was like that. And I was like, oh, I done fucked up. Like, this is not, this is not going to be good. Like, whatever just happened, this is not going to be good. So we start kind of like talking on the way, and I can feel she is really angry. And she's so angry, and we kind of know, like, we have this practice where we're, we're so angry, we actually actually choose not to communicate with each other in that moment because we both realize that what is going to come out of our mouth is not going to be good for us or the relationship. And so it's just, we don't do that. Okay. 
So we kind of start getting into it, but we realize like this is not going anywhere. And so we, we come home. She goes outside to sit in the sun. I go and meditate. We don't really talk about it for a while. And then she kind of like starts to share with me how upset she was and, and how she wants this for our kids and how I chose to go out and how I was doing all of these things throughout the day to, to basically not go to synagogue. And it's always this like big fuck you and blah, blah, blah. And we didn't really take it much farther. We had dinner with the family, etc. The morning after, I'm driving her to the bus and she starts up the conversation. At first, very calmly. Hey, so I just want to kind of like finish up what we were doing before, etc. We get into it. And as she's saying this, more and more anger and frustration and all that stuff builds up. And for me, um, there, there's this, you know, like when someone's telling you all the ways that you wronged them or fucked up, it's very difficult to be like, yes, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Like there's a part of you that gets really, really defensive and really, really like wanting to justify and, and, and make your point and all that stuff. Right. And so I'm literally in the car and she's sitting next to me and it feels for 10 minutes, she's just railing into me about all the ways that I messed yesterday up and how I, you know, fucked things up for, for her and the kids and how, and, and then it just starts spiraling into this whole thing about how I'm, um, not only insensitive, it's deep, it's different. It's like, I only look out for myself and I'm so self-centered and I, and I, um, I don't ever do things for others. And, and she starts naming all of these things. And I'm like, well, and I, what I try to explain to her is the hair dryer treatment. I love that Lawrence. Uh, what I try to explain to her is that like my experience in, in synagogue was torture. Like, like literally in my system felt like torture. And I, and she's like, well, I do tons of things that, that, uh, I don't want to do for you. And she starts naming the stuff and I'm like, and then the defensive part of me comes in and it's like, well, uh, you know, don't do those things for me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm offering you to do these things. Like these are not things you have to do and, and whatever. And I realized like everything out of my mouth is being righteous and self-defensive and it's not going anywhere. And so she literally gets out of the car to run to her bus mid scream, like mid yelling at me. And, and I'm sitting there after having what Lord's called the hairdryer treatment, you know, like, and I'm so disheveled. I can't even, it was just like so many things were happening in my system at that time. Um, that I wanted to be right about, that I wanted to uh, hold on to and all this stuff. And, and I'm going home and I'm driving home and, and I'm just between like, it, it felt like someone just like punching you over and over and over in the face. I was so dazed and so confused and I come home and I'm angry and I'm angry and I'm frustrated and I want to make my point and I, right, I, all of it. And here's the key, guys, this is like, this is so, what I'm about to tell you, this process that I went through is so important that please just pay attention because I'm going to walk you through about three things that I remembered through the day that if you remember in your relationships, any relationship, not intimate, any relationship, your life will never be the same. So the first thing I remembered the first thing I remembered is this, that I could either be right or I could be in love. I could either be right about exactly all my point of views and how I was and be defensive and have all that mind chatter prove that I was a good guy and I was this and I was that and I would no longer have, and this is part two, because I quickly remembered, hey, I have a commitment in my relationship. And that commitment is to experience love, connection, and intimacy. And when I remembered, hey, what am I committed to? Love, connection, and intimacy, right? So that's really important. Always go back to like, hey, what am I committed to in this relationship? And then right after that, that thought of, okay, well, I can either have that or I can be right. I can't have both. 
I cannot have you two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. I cannot have both. So what am I choosing? Right? And this is like a, an actual choice. All this shit is still happening in my system. I'm still, I want to be defensive. I want to be right. I want all of it. And in the moment I'm like, okay, well, do I choose intimacy, connection, and love with my wife who, by the way, we're celebrating 10 years or am I choosing to be right about this? Now, once you do that, something really interesting happens because your focus where your mind wants to take you is, let me be right about this. Let me prove my point. Let me show them why I'm this and they're not. But as soon as you make that, that shift and you go, okay, what am I committed to? Then the focus changes. And now if my true commitment is, Hey, love, intimacy, and connection, then now I get to focus on some different shit. How do I get love, commitment, and intimacy back in my life? Because my wife is fuming right now. And she's on a bus, and she is angry, and she is frustrated, and she's mad. And that brings me to point number three. And point number three is this. This is so important to remember. This will alleviate so much headache and stress and frustration for you in your life if you really just bring this into your heart. Everyone's point of view is 100% accurate and valid. I'm going to say that again. Everyone's point of view and experience of life is 100% accurate and valid for them. You don't need to agree with it. You don't have to understand it logically because truth be told, I couldn't understand my wife's point of view logically. I couldn't understand why she would react the way she would react because I know that if I was in that situation, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't have reacted that way. And once I can bring myself to that place of understanding, wow, her experience is 100% valid. I don't need to understand it. I don't need to be to get the logic of it, I can just validate that that was her experience. Now that allows you to tap into something else. And what I chose to tap into is compassion. Yeah, Amanda, you said it right. Perspective is subjective, right? So now if I get that her experience is 100% valid, the next thing I get to experience is what is that perspective? And I actually sat there and put myself in her shoes as all this stuff was happening. And I could feel the anger and being let down and I could feel the frustration and I could feel all of it, all the pain and hurt. And I could get that I was responsible for her having that response. When you have compassion and you can put yourself in another person's shoes, not to get on the tangent here, right? And I'm, this is not to get political. But look what's happening in our world right now, in the U.S. at least, with, with Brett Kavanaugh and uh, Dr. Ford, right? Everyone's kind of like ground in. This is my point of view. This is her point of view. And you know what? For me, I always like to put myself in both of their point of views. You know what? Both of their lives right now fucking suck. Because there's so much hate They've been putting through the ringer. Do you do like everyone's like, well, you know, he shouldn't have reacted that way or she shouldn't react that way. You don't know because you're not in that fucking position. And in that position, in that time frame, like that's that's their valid experience, right? And so we can have compassion for that. And so when I start to see all this, right? And I start to get my wife's experience. Sorry. Someone called me. Uh, now, what I can start to get is her world. And that gives me access to something. Now I can be responsible, 100% responsible for how her world is occurring in that moment. And let me tell you, if your commitment is to love, intimacy, and connection, and you feel what I felt that I put my wife through, that is the fucking opposite of love intimacy and connection and regardless of what I was feeling in my system at the time of being tortured of all that other stuff 
Where was the focus during all of that? Me. Me, 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 me. What I was feeling, how I was feeling, all of it. Ha! <laughs> Jay, Jay Heights here, and he was actually, he walked outside as I was sitting outside with my son uh, during synagogue. So, I started to see this. Now, here's, here's the, the part that gets a little bit uncomfortable. Because now, it's not about just recognizing that stuff. Now comes the action piece. So most people are very satisfied with the aha moment. Like, oh, I saw this myself. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so good. Uh Uh-uh. Now comes the actual conversation piece. The part where you go to the other person involved and you call yourself out on all of it. And you start to come from a place of 100% responsibility. Not that they did anything, not nothing. You look for where did I, where was I responsible for how this whole event happened? And so I went to my wife and I explained all this stuff to her. I literally walked her through the same things that I'm walking through right now. And we had a brilliant conversation that lasted more than a few days. And it's still lasting. This is not something that like, you know, it was a one and done conversation. What's really fascinating is when you show up to a conversation and you take 100% responsibility, you will quickly notice that the other person in charge will also start to look for where they're responsible. And yes, there are going to be parts in the conversation where they're like, yes, you were an asshole. And yes, you did this. And it's not your job to feel bad in the moment because you're obviously calling yourself out on it. So when they say that to you, notice, just be like, yeah, I was. Yes, I was. Now, after I had that conversation with her, which led to a few things that we're just getting to look at. Look, a relation with 10 years, right? So we've been together for about 11 and a half years. So over that time period, people change. I'm not even talking about just the circumstances of your life change, right? Like we met, we were 26. I'm 37 today. We got two kids. I've lost, built a business, lost a business, built another business, closed that business, started another business. Like a lot of stuff have happened, right? We've traveled the world. She's grown, etc. And so it's irrational to think that you don't get to revisit your relationship and what works and what doesn't work. In fact, what I found, which was absolutely gorgeous in this entire process is And this is starting to unravel like what I've started to see in myself, which I I think is important for you guys to hear. I'll take it a step further here in a a second. But, you know, what I feel is happening is like my wife's flame, like the light inside of her is really wanting to start to come out more and more. And like I've always been this way. My energy, when I'm a fuck yes all in, I'm like the most infectious person that you can be around. I get everyone psyched, right? Now, the same side of that on the opposite, oh my God. So when I'm a fuck no, like I don't want to do this, I'm the biggest energy suck. Like the people around me are so affected and everyone knows Elon does not want to fucking do this. I have like a big, this is probably how I was sitting in synagogue was this big like, fuck you, don't talk to me sign written on my head. So the same way that that energy is like super infectious because my energy is always out, right? Some people, they get into certain situations and they're like overwhelmed or, or in fear. or They like suck themselves in and disappear. I'm the exact opposite. I'm like a flame in one direction or I'm a flame in the other. But that flame either lights up you on the inside or it fucking burns you. And I get to be responsible for that. And so I've been this way for a long, long time. And I've actually started to have conversations with with friends and, and things like that about it of late. But, you know, for my wife, while I've always been that way, I think what's really interesting is today her light is really starting to come through and her energy is starting to come through. And when I be that way, like really, really big, it actually squashes her, her light. It squashes her fire. 
And for maybe the first time in a long time, that doesn't feel good for her anymore. So she doesn't want to experience that. So that's just something that we're looking at. Like, well, how do we kind of co-create? And, and, and when in those moments she feels like that I'm doing that thing to actually say it in the moment to me versus having it build and build and build and build and build, and build, build which creates that, that huge fire. And this is something that my friend Ben actually, uh, when I shared this with him the first time, had me see. You know, a lot of the times when we have these blowouts, we tend to look at the blowout itself, like the, the, the incident itself. And we tend to like start to try to unravel and unpack this, this one incident. And he reminded me of something really beautiful because there was two things I was really upset about. The first thing when this happened, I was like, why me? Why us? Why is this happening to me? And he reminded me that whether it was now or on Thanksgiving or on New Year's or next year sometime, this is something that we have to go through. So going into the why me, why us, why now, all that is irrelevant because this is an experience that our relationship needed to have in order to build something stronger. So I was like, oh, wow, that feels really, really good, right? Um, and then the other thing, which I can't remember right now what I want to say, I'll come back to. So here's, here's what I really want to um, share with you guys about the work that I then went and did personally. I spoke to you about the body sensations, right? And by the way, just let me know, is this, is this resonating? Like, are you guys seeing your relationships in this? Uh, can, can, yeah, just let me know if, if as I'm sharing this, cause this is really, really important stuff. And I, I really hope that you guys are getting value from this. Um, look, this was, no, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. This was like the most uncomfortable I've probably ever been in my relationship ever. Because I'm driving home and I'm like, holy shit, like, this is how people get divorced. It's this, like, like it's these conversations, right? Like, where all this shit builds up. Oh, yeah, so this was the other thing that I knew it would come back to me. The other thing that was really important is that it's not, don't delve and try to fix or figure out the incident. Realize that the incident was a highlighter for a much, much deeper thing. And so for my wife, there's like a much deeper conversation there's a much deeper piece about that energy of feeling like I'm either, you know, lifting her up or like burying everything around. And like when I'm a fuck no, like that, that impacts her. And so we got to have that conversation. And that really was the conversation. No, it wasn't what happened in the synagogue was like, you know, quote unquote, the needle that broke the right. The needle that broke the camel's back. I think. Yeah. Something like that. It's, but it's way, way deeper than that, right? And that's really important when you're having these conversations. It's like, don't delve on the moment itself. Always look for like, what is the underlying thing that's at, at, that's impacting the relationship? And that was really, really beautiful for us. So then after we did that stuff, I went and started to do my own work. Because what I'm really curious about, right? You guys had all mentioned that you've had that experience at some point where, where something, you know, come like starts building up inside of you like a volcano and then just all of a sudden there's an eruption. I got curious. I'm like, well, what is that? What was that rage that I felt in synagogue? Because for me, that was the highlighter, right? Like there's a whole piece about my relationship with Fanny. And then there's a whole piece about like what happened internally to me that I just totally missed. And what I started to unravel through through a lot of the work that, that, that Guy and I do um, is there's this part of me that is massively attached to autonomy. And I've known this. It was just a deep, deeper experiential knowing of this, which is when I'm being told what to do, uh, when I feel like I don't have a say or control that feeling starts building up inside of me. And yeah, so Tammy, that's that's actually, I think you guys are on a delay, but that's like actually exactly what it is. So when I started to unravel that, look, there's tons of experiences that I've had that with, right? But that energy that I was telling you about where I'm like a fuck yes or a fuck no, that fuck no part comes from where I feel like I've lost autonomy, where I feel like I don't have a say anymore. 
And what's really interesting is that in the moment, just like I was sharing with, with you guys about uh, Fanny, like if in the moment she's feeling something by my energy and she just says like, hey, Elon, you're doing that thing. You're like sucking all the life out of the room, you're blah, blah, blah. That's a good reminder for me, right? Like that's a great red flag. And then I can actually in the moments where I feel all this stuff happen, I can be in communication. And you ever notice that like when you say something, you know, the example I love to use is like you're you go on stage and you're super, super nervous. They always tell you like, tell tell the people on stage, I'm really, really nervous. And you tell people and, and the nerves kind of disappear. And so in those moments, now I get this new practice of when I feel like I don't have a say or when I feel like I don't have uh, like it's it's out of my control and someone's dictating and I have to do this. I can actually be honest with whatever's happening around me. So it's like Fanny and I can be like, look, at, in the moment, I, I feel like I don't have a say in this, et cetera, right? And in as I'm saying that, you will actually feel a release in the body. Now, another practice, um, Tammy, is autonomy ego-driven? That's a really good question. Um, let me explain it this way. I think there are parts. So, so ego is a word that gets thrown around a lot, and I think it, it, it's kind of like difficult for people to understand. So I'm going to say it this way. There are parts of us, very, very young parts, that are like protectors, right? So that there's a part of me that wants me to feel independent, that wants me to feel like I get a say, etc. And so when I don't have that experience, protectors come online. And protectors are like, you can't make me, don't fucking touch me, you can, all that stuff. Those are protectors. And they all work beautifully. Like there's not, there's gifts in this stuff too, right? So like think of being independent and there's like, can list you like multitudes of things. Why, how independence has made me super successful. So we don't want to look at these things as like, that's a bad part of us. This is a good part. It's more just, it's a part and we get to dive into the gift of the part and then the shadow of the part as well. Right? So for me and for you, this is really what I'm inviting you to is like to honor those moments to see and notice as quickly as you can that whole experience that wants to rise up. And instead of having the explosion, see if you can actually feel in the moment what that is and what your system is actually asking for. And if you need any help with this, like this is the kind of work that we do. So you don't have blow ups in relationships. And by the way, look, I do this work all the time. I still had a blow up with my wife. And within 24 hours, we went from yelling. I mean, like yelling, like you see in the movies, yelling to having intimacy, connection, and love, which is what I'm committed to back in our lives and in our relationship. And I can tell you like with hundred percent certainty that that is exactly the kind of stuff that people get divorced over because they'd rather be right then have what they're truly committed to. So to put a bow on this, remember, here are the, the three major things, right, that, that help me. You can write these down, do whatever you want. The first is you can either be right or you can be in love. You can't have both. The second, remind yourself of what you are committed to in this relationship, whether it's with your children, whether it's with your spouse, house, whether it's with your business partner, what are you truly committed in that relationship? And are the actions you're taking right now consistent with that commitment? And you will surely find that you are choosing to be right instead of honoring that commitment. The third thing, everyone's point of view is 100% valid. 100% valid. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to believe it. You don't need to say anything. You just get to honor that their point of view is 100% valid and bring compassion to that viewpoint. See if you can actually put yourself in that place to feel what they're feeling, not through your brain, through your heart, actually feel what they are feeling. And then once you unpack all of that stuff, and you start to realize where you're 100% responsible for everything that happened, 
you get to go and have that conversation and you call one out on yourself. And I know that it's uncomfortable. I know this is the part that your ego is going to go haywire. No, but they did this and then put all that aside and bring yourself back to that commitment. I, if you guys have any questions about anything I covered right now, I'm happy to stay on here and answer anything, um, anything that came up for you that you want to share. I know we're in a little bit of a delay here, so I'm happy to chill here for, for a few minutes if, if you guys uh, are called to share anything. Um, but yeah, this is like so, so, so important and can save you so much heartache and frustration because eventually you're going to come to this and sometimes you guys are already separated at that point. And then you're just left with guilt. Guilt and shame. And then you have to do all this other work that we do with people about forgiving their parents or their spouses or <sighs> just so much easier in the moment. And honestly, like I'm so grateful that I have these tools. I'm so grateful that I have this ability to to see this stuff in the moment and, and more so share it, you know, like all these people, there many, many of you guys are, are working with us in one way or another. And, you know, just the ability to share this and have you guys take this in your world and, and impact your spouses and, and loved ones and partners and children is just absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, if, uh, unless anyone has any other questions, uh, Kevin, I love that your daughter gets to reap the benefits of the maturity you took to put the relationship first, family strong. Yeah, and, and that's such a good point because as your kids mimic how you operate with your spouse more than anything else. It's not what you tell them how to be. It's what they see you being. And so having that ability to process this in a very, very quick and timely manner so that you can get back into that thing which you are committed to in the first place is absolutely massive. All right, so if there are no questions, I just want to thank you all who are here participating, commenting. Uh, this was something that I was, for the last week, really just wanting to share and, and trying to figure out how to do it. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment box. Um, if this impacted you, please let me know and what you took away from this and how you're going to uh, have this live on through action in your life and if there's anyone in your life that you feel called uh, that has some sort of experience right now in a relationship that you think this would make a uh, uh, this would give them some freedom or insight please 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 share this this is a, I know this is a, quite a personal raw message but I would love to get this out there so um, love you guys thank you so much we'll see you soon